Hey guys, Vanya back again with RC Alley and today with me I have my Grautner Polaron EX uh, charger and power supply combo. This is a dual port charger so you can charge two batteries at once. It comes with a power supply attached to it and it's all one unit. So looking at the wires here, it comes with your balance lead. This actually I had from before, but uh, it does come with uh, these single bullets that come in, that plug in here, and then you solder your own connection to it. These are uh, temperature sensors for the battery, a uh, couple extra ports, uh, there's a USB here so you can charge your phone or whatever you need. A uh, mini USB on top, not a micro. Then here on the side we have a couple things. On the back uh, we'll get into the details in a little bit. So I'm going to start with the only negative uh, about this charger. And that is it comes with a 12 volt power supply. And you might think that's not a big deal but this charger can support up to 400 watts per channel so it's two channels and that is with a 24 volt power supply with the 12 volt it's only about 220 watts per channel and that's a big difference that means uh right now i can only charge my uh 4s battery at about nine nine and a half amps not much higher than that now you might not think that it's a big deal that it only came with a 12 volt uh, power supply but I do a lot of uh, 8 scale electric racing and I can only charge my 4S batteries at about uh, 9, 9.23 amps, uh, not higher than that and sometimes I do wish I could charge my big 6500 4S batteries a little bit quicker. Uh, it's not the biggest deal. Uh, you can get an aftermarket power supply that is 24 volts and it would push uh, this charger to 400 watts per channel but then it wouldn't be one single unit like this it would have to be a separate unit somewhere on the side and i do look i do like the looks of this and so far it's been all right the the 400 watts would be nice but i make do Taking a closer look at the front of the charger, uh, you can see there are two, two channels on the charger itself. So this blue part is the charger, this is the power supply. It, come, it does up to 7S, comes, uh, comes with uh, balance leads. It did not come with this, I had this from before. It just comes with uh, single connections where you solder your own end to it. On the bottom here, uh, what you're looking at is battery temperature sensor. So when you're charging the battery, you can place it on top of this sensor and it'll monitor the temperature for you. We have one button, rest of it is touch screen and this is a screen as well, but uh, it, it's not touch. There are no options whatsoever on the power supply, you just plug and go. If you're looking at the charger, this is the right side of it. There's one USB port, there's a servo test slot, a motor sensor slot, and external module slot. So the servo test you can do, but for all the other options that this charger can do, so break in a brush motor, test a sensor, and it can even uh, program one of their ESCs directly from the charger you do need a separate separate module for so only the servo test works and uh, we will perform this test a little bit later in the video so the USB is nice uh, you can charge your phone you can charge your tablet whatever you bring to the track with you so looking at the rear of the charger we have a couple fans here another uh, plug and then the power cord plug is on the power supply as well as the on and off switch and the power supply has its own fan as well. The top of a char the charger just has one mini USB plug. This is a mini and not a standard micro. 
All right, I'm going to power on the charger now and go through the functions. All right, and one thing I forgot uh, to say earlier, it does come with a little touch pen. So here we have the voltage of the power supplies, how many amps is drying right now, and the temperature of it. And over here, the charger part, we have profiles. So this is where you create your battery profiles. Charge, discharge, cycle, balance, data, miscellaneous, and user settings. All right, starting with the uh, profile, you just click it. You can rename it by holding this down. Options for LIFE, e LiPo, Nickel Metal, how many volts it is, and how many milliamps it is. Very simple to use. Next is charge, so you select, when you create a profile, you find the profile that you want and you just hit charge and it does it. So discharge, same thing, select the profile and hit discharge and it just starts discharging for you. Cycle, again, same deal, uh, you can uh, set delays and whatnot. Uh, I don't ever really use that. I don't cycle my batteries. So I just discharge them if they need to be discharged or charge if they need to be charged. Next is the balance option. Same deal. Once you create that profile for a battery, it's forever in there. And this thing has so much memory that uh, you'll never fill it up no matter how many batteries you have and yeah you just click go and it does it does its thing here we have data and it just you know standard data that uh that's necessary for batteries uh so input voltage is of the power supply output how many volts uh the chargers pushing battery temperature so it's just whatever it is right now as I hold it it'll go up wrong one see it immediately the battery temperature as I'm holding the sensor in my hand goes up and then resistance of your battery this is really helpful uh, when you're trying to figure out if uh, your battery is still good or not the lower the resistance the better it is and uh, miscellaneous, uh, you can do servo test, motor test, you can use it for a warmer or plug in your Graupner ESC and program it directly from the charger. So the only thing uh, that we can do is the servo test uh, without the optional module. And then user settings, just your settings, beeps, like the brightness of the screen. I can scroll through them a little bit. Date, time, alarms, username. Just basic stuff. Alright, uh, now I'm going to actually plug in a battery and show you the process of how to charge a battery, discharge, and I'll do the servo test too. So I have my battery all plugged in and uh, now I'm going to put it to charge. First I gotta find the profile, oh that was actually it. So voltage 4.2, current I'm gonna charge it at 5.5 amps even though it's a 3500 milliamp battery. Uh, cutoff temp 84 Fahrenheit, max capacity 105%, safety timer 120 minutes. So if uh, the battery doesn't charge in 120 minutes, the charger will stop charging. So I'm just going to start it. It does a couple ch tests or checks the battery, make sure it's all plugged in correctly before it actually starts.
all right so on top here we have how long it's been charging the temperature of the sensor as you recall that's the one that i held with my fingers and it skyrocketed up this is the voltage of the battery and this is how many amps it's currently charging at there's a graph of the charge as well so if we click on this it'll give you a little more data scroll through it for you oops oh good so it automatically balances if you plug in the balance port oh was there one more page let's see yep one more thing just the balance uh, graph in graph form as we can see cell 1 is a little bit uh, more full than cell 2 but cell 2 is the one that's currently charging well I guess it's going back and forth but usually it's fine I mean I have no issues with unbalanced cells ever as you can tell the gra graph drops a little bit so every once in a while it just stops charging for a sec and it picks it back up. Now for the servo test I already have my servo plugged in. Go to miscellaneous servo and hit start. And it just starts spinning back and forth and that's how you know it works. You can uh, do this at different speeds too. Just stop it and that's it. Would I recommend for an average RCer to go and spend, you know, 400 something dollars on a charger? Uh, I would if it came with a 24 volt power supply, but since it came with that 12 volt, I can't exactly recommend it. That is a big difference in power and for, for that amount of money I feel like you should be able to get to use the full potential of your charger. And not that it's bad by any means right now, but why even advertise that it can do 400 watts and then bundle it uh, with a 12 volt power supply where that limits it to only 220. And you know, it's not, not the end of the world, it still does a 4S battery at about 9.2 amps, which is fast that'll charge uh, my 6500s in about 45 minutes it's a lot quicker than some chargers but for the amount of money I feel like they should have included that 24 volt power supply and I would have gotten my one myself but I just like how it all looks in one package it's easier to carry around uh, the charger itself is awesome I have zero issues with it it's pretty old now maybe even a couple of years and yeah it's been working great uh, the only thing that I will ever say bad about it is that it should have came with a 24 volt power supply alright guys uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this video uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit about this charger maybe you decided you wanted to get one for yourself uh, it's not bad uh, I love it besides the power supply but then again uh, I, I don't have any complaints like I'm not selling it I'm not exchanging it I'm keeping it and I hope to keep it for a long time if you've liked this video hit that like button subscribe hit that little bell next to the subscribe to stay up to date with all the videos that we're making here more product reviews coming soon, uh, more running videos, crashing videos, all, uh, all in the works. Alright guys, thanks again and I'll talk to you next time.